The Shabbos before Pesach is called Shabbos Hagodol, the Great Shabbos. And the reason is because a great miracle happened on that Shabbos as part of the Exodus story. But what's great about that miracle and why it is specifically commemorated on a Shabbos has to do with the spiritual nature of Shabbos. And once we understand how Shabbos works, it gives us a depth of understanding about the story as well. The Talmud was the Shabbos for Chag Pesach vet on Guf and Shabbos are God. Zok the Alter Rebbe Shulchan Aruch. The Alter Rebbe says in Shulchan Aruch the reason why the Shabbos before Pesach is called Shabbos Agadol. Let's quote him. Vezel Shoyne Shabbos Shlifnei Pesach Kol Noisa Shabbos Agadol. The Shabbos prior to Pesach we call the Great Shabbos. Reason being the Fish and Asa by Nes Agadol because a great miracle happened on that day. What was the great miracle? Because Pesach Mitzrayim Hoyo Mikhoimi Beosar, because you had to take the lambs that were going to be used for the first Korban Pesach when they were still in Egypt on the tenth of Nisan. like the Pasuk says, that you take it on the on the the tenth of the day. Each each family had to take a sheep. And that tenth of Nisan was a Shabbos. Now when they took these animals, Shabbos. So the firstborn Egyptians came to the Jewish people and they said to Shalom, they wanted to know, why are you doing this? The Jews said to the firstborns, we're bringing a, 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 an offering to Hashem. And the reason is, because they were just going to kill the firstborn Egyptians. Well, the, the firstborns didn't like that too much. So the firstborns went to their own parents and to Paroi himself, the vacation and asked them, please send the Jews out. <laughs> you know, our life is on the line over here. And Paroi and the leadership of Egypt didn't want to listen. Well, then, there was an uprising of the firstborns and a civil war against Paroi and the leadership. And they killed many, many people. Kosov says the Alter Rebbe, that's what the meaning of the Pasuk in Tilim is when it says, to strike the, the Egyptians with or through their firstborns. Because that happened on Shabbos, we established, says the Alter Rebbe, a commemoration of that miracle every single year through the generations on Shabbos. We call that the Great Shabbos. That's how Shabbos HaGadol got its name. So we know the backstory. Now we need to understand how and why this is. Davin Fashtein. So first thing, other favors is the Altarebbe. Why does the Altarebbe have to tell us that there was a great miracle that happened on that day? Which seems to imply the reason it's called the Great Shabbos is because the miracle that happened on the day was a great miracle. Now, logically, let's assume that the miracle that happened on that Shabbos was a regular miracle. Not some outstanding miracle. Would still be good enough as a reason to distinguish this Shabbos from every other Shabbos on the calendar and call it the Great Shabbos because there was a miracle. It doesn't have to be a great miracle. Because a Shabbos that has a miracle is greater than an ordinary Shabbos. So that would be enough reason for Shabbos. Ha-Godel, what does the Alter Rebbe intend by telling us it was a great miracle? Question two, Bayes Nochmez Nifashtandik. In fact, the second question is even stronger. If all Spashtate, the great sky from them Ness, as there's a long unroof, from Veren, Neat Ness, Stam, no Ness Godel. What was so incredible about this miracle that gives it the status of not just being a miracle, but a great miracle? There doesn't appear to be anything so spectacular about the miracle itself. What about this miracle makes it look so more unusual or spectacular than other miracles? Miracles are always spectacular. And we certainly do not see anything spectacular as, the result, as a result of this miracle. Because even after the civil war between the firstborns and everybody else, the Jews remained slaves in Egypt. And they still needed another miracle, which was going to be the death of those same firstborns. And only then could they be afraid from Israel in order to be liberated from Egypt. So what great benefit was there for the Jewish people that there was a great miracle of a civil war between the firstborns and Paroyani's people? 
Euch der in was wir hatten, sicher an Esther, der ist gewähr gewähnt, nicht in Leute, ja, Es ist eine andere Frage, und das ist, how come it is that the date we've set to commemorate this miracle is not a date on the calendar, wie den Esther, wenn ihr jetzt mit Zerim, wie ihr jetzt über Zerim, like, for example, the, the date of the Exodus is Pesach, or various other miracles. No, Leute, ihr habt ja schon vor Shabbos. But it's specifically something we commemorate according to the days of the week. It's a Shabbos HaGadol, and that Fadda does bother. That also needs to be explained. So, the Alter Rebbe does give a reason for it. The Alter Rebbe is not mevor in them time. V'loma loy kavu ba'asir lochedesh tam. Why is it that we do not commemorate this great miracle on the 10th of Nisan every single year? Be'in shechol b'shabbos, be'in shechol b'chol, whether it be Shabbos or a weekday, that's for a kederich shenik b'kol ha'moyadim, like any other yontiv. So he says it's a reason that Fisha Basara ben Nisan may send Miriam because many years later the tenth of Nisan would be the day of the passing of Miriam. The cover by Tainus Kishachol Bechol Chule and it was set to be a day of mourning, uh, sorry, a day of fasting, at least when it's during the week, and so that therefore wasn't going to be a, a day of celebration. Fine, we have an explanation, but the truth is there are no coincidences in Judaism. There has to be a deep explanation to this. Abba von Desveg, nevertheless. When you consider that every single element of Torah is absolutely precise, Muslim Zogan, we have to say, as no is of some time shlili, then in addition to the reason why not to celebrate the date of the tenth, why they didn't make this miracle commemorated on the tenth of Nisan. There also has to be a positive reason why it is associated with Shabbos. So not just to avoid an issue, there has to be a connection between this miracle and Shabbos. Why we chose to commemorate this great event specifically on a Shabbos. Because the truth is that does indicate that there has to be a unique connection between whatever this miracle is all about and Shabbos. And you can actually see this in the fact that Hashem's instruction to the Jewish people was that they should take a lamb per family. When did they have to do it? Not only did they have to prepare the lamb in order to bring a carbon Pesach, but it's very specific in the Torah that they had to bring it on that day, which is on the 10th of Nisan. Vosis demel given Shabbos, which was a Shabbos. So there's a reason that Abish is pushing them to start preparing for the carbon Pesach on Shabbos. Even though in order to bring the carbon Pesach, they had to get the lamb, which means they had to acquire the lamb. You're not really supposed to do that on Shabbos. Tiltul bali chayim, and they were going to have to move animals, which you're not supposed to do on Shabbos. Some of you to and transfer from public to private domain. On Shabbos, Bikrami Mumchole, they had to check that it wasn't blemished on Shabbos. All of these things are all contradictions to what you're supposed to do on Shabbos, which is to desist from work and to rest. Ah, you'll say, but there was no Shabbos yet. It's true that this event happened not only before the giving of the Torah, but even before the instruction around Shabbos, which already happened at Mora. But besides that, is no them. In addition to the fact that we baldas kimu ha'ovo is kol atera kol atchelay nitno, we do know that Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov observed all of Torah even prior to it being given. Is vashtanik asay chakol poni ma'chelik from zerikin to have an opki to mitzvah satayra. You have to assume that at least some of their descendants also followed suit and also kept certain elements of Torah or all of Torah or bechlalon shmirah Shabbos, which means at least some Jews were keeping Shabbos. Even before Shabbos was given. But besides that, is Doch Mofirosh in Midrash Chazal. Midrash tells us as Nochim mitn zman Ashibud that even while the Jews were slaves in Egypt, in Mitzrayim, Ad Moshe gepelt by Paroi as Yom Shabbos or Badidin Zayin Yom Menucha. Moshe was able to convince Paroi that the Jews should have Shabbos off as a day of rest. Says Al Nitafon Arbetin v'Shabbos they did not have to do slave labor on Shabbos. So why did Abish now make them do melacha on Shabbos to prepare for the carbon Pesach? And the Baal not cooking to give them at Abish the Bashtimtim's man from Vikrolahem Goyim and Dafka be Yom HaShabbos. In spite of the fact that the Jews clearly had a tradition of Shabbos and Moshe had convinced Paroi to let them rest on Shabbos. And despite that, Abish still tells them to get the carbon Pesach ready on Shabbos. That indicates that the story of preparing the lamb for the carbon Pesach is 
somehow linked to Shabbos. So the link between the Korban Pesach and Shabbos and the link between the miracle that occurred as a result of the Korban Pesach and Shabbos, all of that tells us that Shabbos is a keystone part of this whole conversation. And to order, in order to understand what the meaning is, we have to understand what is so special and unique about Shabbos. Now we think we know what's unique about Shabbos. We're going to see a different perspective. The Bible Anal Vedzevashtandik to understand all of this, we have to first examine what is Shabbos all about. And to do so, we're going to look at a teaching from the Tzemach Tzedek based on a teaching of the Medrash. Tzemach Tzedek is Mevoi from Pasuk. The Tzemach Tzedek comments, the Pasuk tells us, Mizmor Shilu Yom HaShabbos, that on a Friday in the Beis HaMikdash, uh, sorry, on a Shabbos in the Beis HaMikdash, the Beis HaMikdash they would sing, the Levim would sing a song from Tilim, Mizmor Shilu Yom HaShabbos, a song for the day of ultimate Shabbos. So Medrash, so the Medrash comments on that Vazoktif Nimposuk, Le Yoima Shabbos means what is the day of Shabbos? Le Mashbis Mazikin Min Ho'ilam, the time where the Abishta will remove damaging or or toxic elements from the world. Shaloy Aziku, that they won't be able to harm. Like it says that the wolf will lie with the lamb. In other words, it's a reference to the time of Mashiach. In the time of Mashiach, there will be no harmful elements in this world. Says the Tzemach Tzedek, based on that Medrash, as the Pirish and Teichem von Shabbos Yedinim von Shvisa Minam Mezikim. That illustrates to us that the energy and the content of Shabbos is a time that neutralizes harmful elements. Now, how do you neutralize harmful elements? There are two choices. Was dos can sein of zwei fane. Out of one possibility is Mavirum in Oilam. Eradicate anything which is harmful. Die ganze Metzies von Mazikim wird nispatel, which means the concept of a harmful uh, person being concept disappears. That's one possibility. The other possibility is mash bisoshel otazik. Those things still exist. Snakes, for example, still exist, but they no longer harm. Di mazikim bleiben, no di shvisa, di shvisa tutoy fazi, zay zay nitschaych zum mazik zayn. Shabbos, or whatever Shabbos represents in the age of Moshiach, is going to neutralize their harmful element. They don't have to disappear, they're just no longer harmful. Which is better? On the second type of shvisa, as I is a hechav v'derstev v'yazok in Torah's kohanim, like it explains in Torah's kohanim, to neutralize the negative elements without neutralizing the actual being is a much more mature, much more developed kind of approach. So, to have snakes that don't that have venom is a much greater achievement than no more snakes on earth, as an example. As we explain in Hasidus, because it's much better to transform darkness into light than simply to dispel darkness. The ultimate is to transform something that previously was damaging and harmful into something which is actually innocuous and even useful. Now the truth of the matter is that this Shabbos energy of completely neutralizing all harmful elements of the world is only really going to happen when Mashiach comes. The truth is there was a taste of that already at the original Shabbos, the first Shabbos of creation. How do we know that? Was, you could see it in the nature of that Shabbos, the physical nature of that original Shabbos. Like the Chazal tell us that there were 36 hours of this unique light that effectively extended right through Shabbos. But Shabbos Bereshis is given by the Laila Kayoim Yo'ir, which means the original Shabbos at the beginning of creation, there was no darkness at night. The night shone with the brightness of day, which means that already the very first Shabbos that ever existed, the darkness that is natural for nighttime was transformed, is hapcha, was transformed, wasn't neutralized, transformed into light itself. So the Tavos is Dodinum from Nisabchi Shabbos, the reason why the very first Shabbos already carries the theme of transformation of negative to positive, darkness to light, the reason for that is because if you understand the time of Shabbos, it doesn't behave in the same way as the time of the rest of the week. It is a time of conversion and transformation. Now the next part is a little bit tricky, but it, it explains why Shabbos is a different experience of time to any other day of the week. We know that Rashi comments, and it's based effectively on a Medrash, that when it comes to Shabbos, at the end of the six days of creation, what did the world still lack? Menucha. It lacked a sense of 
calm, a sense of tranquility, a sense of serenity. When Shabbos entered the equation, serenity entered the world. So we now have to understand. We know the Magadah message teaches us as man is a nivra. That time is a creation. It's not that time existed and then within the framework of time, Hashem created space. Time is created together with space. Punkt viala nivroim, it is a creation like any other creation. And thus, mate, which means, need not as far brios elim zanik if any vroim. Vos if zeis chaldim and did on agbolo funs man. That means not only is it that prior to the creation there were no beings who were bound by the rules of time. Because the truth is, even post-creation, there are certain things, like for example, a concept, which are not bound by time. In fact, they're not defined by time. Now the etzem etzius has man is anivra. So not only were there no beings bound by time before creation, there's no time. There's no concept of time. Just as the physical matter of all the different life forms, inanimate, plant, animal, and human, were created, their form was created from nothing during the creative process. The concept of time was created from nothing during the creative process. Why is that relevant to our conversation? So that helps us to understand what occurred during the course of the creation of the six days. The very first moment of creation is obviously something new. Wow, there's time. There's a moment. That's new. We've never seen that before. But it's more than that. Each of the six days of creation is the creation of a new type of time. In other words, just like the physical entities that were created on the six days are all distinct, each of the six days of creation was the time of production of a different class of beings that hadn't existed before. And each class of beings is completely different to the other classes of beings that were created on the other days. Likewise, is Yedin Togivar and Aisavos for Naya Andesh Dickens Man, each day or each moment of each day of the six days of creation, a new type of time was created. There's Man for Yom Rishon, there's the concept of the time of a first day, Yom Sheni, the concept of the time of a second day. That's why the Zohar tells us, every day achieves its unique purpose. No two days are the same. And each day has its particular energy associated specifically with it. That's why Mondays are different to Tuesdays, which are different to Wednesdays. Now, that was at the time of creation. But again, ever since the creation of the world, today, is, let's say today's a Monday. It's a repeat of all the Mondays from the very first Monday in history. Other protim inze, or the details of a particular segment of time. The Yamrishim von Zayim Ebreshis Kel and Alazuntox Yam Shen Alamontox and Azei Viter. So whichever way you look at it, either it's a repeat or it's a detail of the original Monday, the original Sunday, etc. So now time doesn't have to be recreated at every moment. It just has to be reignited at every moment. You come back to the same point in time and it happens again. But in the time of the first week of creation, each day has to be hatched from new. So that's the, if that's the case, then we have to ask ourselves a question. What do you mean Shabbos brings serenity and peace and tranquility to the world? What do you mean Shabbos should bring the time frame called Shabbos? Just like Friday brings the time frame called Friday and from there on there are Fridays, Shabbos should bring a time frame called Shabbos. Why are we asking what did Shabbos bring? We're saying that the innovation, the introduction of energy through Shabbos is the energy of rest. Why? The definition of creation is all the various elements of time and space. Before there was the concept of a seventh day called Shabbos, what was missing in the world is not just an, a, a, a state of rest, 
Like the Mitzvah from Yemash Vizman. The whole concept of Shabbos time hadn't yet been created. So from Fashtandik as unless of course we understand that the concept of Menucha of rest is the nature of the time of Shabbos that was introduced. We cannot distinguish between the time, the 24-hour period called Shabbos that was introduced and the content of that time, which is the content of rest. The Zman for Shabbos is The time of Shabbos is a unique time that is defined as serenity and rest. That was that mean? To be in them. Zman is more von over, heve und asid. The way that you measure time is past, present, and future. That's what distinguishes time. And in them, in amchile v'shine von over, heve ve'asid, the fact that there is past, present, and future, that's gleich z'chois de zman von alle sheishes and meibereishes. That is common to every day. A Monday has the past, the present, and the future. A Tuesday has the past, present, and future. Even though a Monday is a completely different energy to a Tuesday, etc. Shabbos is different. The time on Shabbos is not past, present and future. The time on Shabbos is rest, that lack of movement. Shabbos is time that is beyond the distinctions of past, present and future. That's what the Chazal are telling us, that when Shabbos comes, rest comes. As desman von Yoim Ashvi, the nature of time during that seventh day called Shabbos, which, of course, can also be defined in past, present and future, is in but the reality is, in that past, present, and future is something outside of and beyond past, present, and future, which means it is on the one hand, you can watch it on the clock and you will see the passage of time, and yet the nature is you don't feel the passage of time, you feel you're in a state of rest. So that means that Shabbos itself converts, it transforms, transforms ordinary time into an unusual type of time. That has an impact because the time frame of Shabbos is such, has an impact on the day of Shabbos. That Shabbos is a time defined by transformation. So in the language of Hasidus, we'll see a little bit later, in the language of Hasidus, basically, Shabbos allows us to live in time and above time simultaneously. And therefore, we're converting the ordinary time frame of the week into something which is beyond the ordinary time frame because Shabbos is a day that transforms things from their diversified negative reality into a unified positive reality. Let's see. Dugma Davar. So let's find an example in halacha that illustrates the same point, something which reflects the passage of time yet remains beyond the passage of time. So here, there are a couple of examples. Yes, There are things that are within the framework of time and therefore they have to be experienced over a specific period of time. And yet, at the same time, that even though it's a passage of time, which may be over a few days, it's a single entity. We're going to have a really good example of this in a moment. Let's first start with this example. The difference between a child whose bar mitzvah is on Shabbos or on Yom Kippur. So the says, if the child becomes bar mitzvah in the middle of Shabbos, then that from the age of bar mitzvah, you know, it's from the time, I guess, that they were born, that child is now required to keep the rest of Shabbos because each moment of Shabbos is independent. Whereas Yom Kippur is a single entity, so if you didn't keep the beginning of Yom Kippur, there's no value in keeping the rest of Yom Kippur because it's already happened. That's why we have certain views about Sfer Soimer as well. Sfer Soimer is 49 different days where there's past, present, and future. It's one concept. 
of counting of Sphere Soimer. So you miss a day, that's it, you can't say the Brocha anymore. You've missed the entire, quanti- the, the entire concept now. In other words, there are places in Halacha where we examine something both in the scope of time, past, present, and future, and yet there's got an, it's got an element which transcends time, which is a unified element right across the experience. If you're missing that piece at one point, you're missing the whole piece. Another example, and Lachzidem, Apiola Nim Shech, certain things have an effect that is ongoing. Very relevant for us. The example of the Exodus from Egypt is not a once upon a time event. So we understand to exit from Mitzrayim needed time. Not only did it need time, there were phases that were different in the passage of Exodus. Koidan chatzois to prepare the carbon pesach. Chatzois to finish eating the carbon pesach. Leach chatzois to prepare to leave Mitzrayim and get all the gold and silver from the Egyptians. Yoim tezvav in the morning of the 15th of Nisan where you actually leave Egypt. All of that together is one concept. Yitzias Mitzrayim, but it's got very distinct time frames with very distinct responsibilities. Of Elashen HaGemara, if you look at the Gemara's expression, Nigalu Be'erev, they were redeemed from Mitzrayim at night, but Yotzu Bayoim, they only physically left in the day. Or you have Chippos in the Mitzrayim, Chippos in the Yisrael, you have the frenzy of the Egyptians trying to get them out in the night, you have the urgency of the Jews to leave in the morning. To Zaman and meet, and with the fact that there's all these very different pockets of time associated with Yitzias Mitzrayim, is the Zel Batoichem from Yitzias Mitzrayim, that theme of Yitzias Mitzrayim, Exodus, breaking free of Mitzrayim, is Nimshech Opoyel Bechol Dor Vador Bechol Yoim Vayoim, is something that extends right throughout the whole of history. That every one of us is obligated to view ourselves as if we've left Egypt today. To the point that we say in the Haggadah, if the Ebershah had not taken our forefathers out of Mitzrayim, we would be in Mitzrayim. So there you have a very clear time frame. This happened, then this happened, then that happened, past, present, future. That defines Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And yet at the same time, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is a concept that stretches right across the span of time and is relevant to us now. That's what Shabbos does. Shabbos has the evening of Shabbos, the morning of Shabbos, the afternoon of Shabbos, different tefillahs, different meals, etc. And Shabbos is a unified concept of living beyond time because you could rest. So you're not bound by the clock. That helps us understand why the Alter Rebbe insists that it's not just that a miracle occurred and therefore it's a great Shabbos, but a great miracle occurred. What's a great miracle? In Devas Murabas the Shaykh Sir Shabbos, the Al Trebbe wants to link the nature of this miracle to the nature of Shabbos. Satsakh Shem Giret Amo Baruchal, there's quite a well known Sikha from the Rebbe as the Gid Al Nesma Shabbos Agodal, that the great miracle of Shabbos Agodal, but state in Demas Arigas Mitraim is given Durchti Bikhir Mitraim. Is not the fact that Egyptians were killed, it's the fact that Egyptian firstborns killed Egyptians. Vas Bechir is in Yone Tokev because we know that a firstborn always represents the power, the, the pristine nature of a particular group. The Tokev from Klipas Mitzrayim, therefore the firstborn Egyptians, they represent the power of that spiritual um, aberration called Mitzrayim. And here's a scenario where the Jews are still slaves. In Mitzrayim, unter Memshelis Paroi, under Paroi's jurisdiction. Vir is noch betokvoy, and Paroi at that time is the superpower. On Paroi mit Mitzrayim willen beschumoy finit arois los und idem for Mitzrayim. At a time where Paroi and his inner circle, and the whole nation for that matter, refused to let the Jews go. Und in Azaz man, in such circumstances, monen bechere Mitzrayim is mzol ba freind idem. It's the, the, the Egyptian firstborns who now insist on letting the Jews go. And they believe so strongly the Jews should go that they take up arms and they fight against the Egyptians. That's incredible. And in spite of this, Paro is not unseated. Even after the civil war, he doesn't budge and he's not letting the Jews go. That is a unique miracle, a great miracle we don't normally see. Normally miracles, normally miracles to save the Jews are destroy the enemy. Hang Haman on a tree. 
But the whole chap of this battle that occurred between the firstborn Egyptians and the rest of the nation, that is the transformation. Taking the actions of darkness and turning them into actions of light. Where the most powerful elements of Klippa are fighting on behalf of Kedusha. That is unprecedented. On the rib is given the tzivu von Ebrishen as vichlem yisrael veisovis. That's why Hashem's instruction to the Jewish people to take these lambs to prepare for the korban pesach was al teitzo. Their fun is given the nest from the makom yitzrayim bifcharem, which was the catalyst to get this whole civil war started. So zayim b'shabbos dafka. The Ebrishen wanted that process to begin on a shabbos. From the teichen inyan a shabbos is beduk masanes because shabbos is all about exactly what this miracle would be all about. The shviso ubitul from the mazikim in an oifan as bechayva teikef a klipa on choishach atzmoi to tapula hofchis piula saor. Shabbos is where you get rid of harmful elements. How do you get rid of them? You transform them into beneficial elements. That's what happened over here in the story. The enemies of the Jews fought on behalf of the Jews. That's why, out of all the various reasons why the Shabbos could be called Shabbos HaGodol, the Alter Rebbe only chooses to quote the, the, the explanation that it's because of the civil war between the firstborns and the Egyptians. He doesn't even quote any of the other reasons, not even as a second reason. The reason Alter Rebbe only uses this particular explanation is because this is the explanation that helps us understand why it's called the Great Shabbos. The Pirush of Shabbos HaGodol is, we always thought Shabbos HaGodol means this Shabbos is great because a great miracle happened on the Shabbos. But there's more to it. As in the Indian for Shabbos Ubitel Hamazikim. Really, Shabbos Agodo means what Shabbos represents, which includes neutralizing and transforming harmful elements, is their Godel. This Shabbos stands out from all other Shabbos in that regard. That says in the Gresser on Hechra Madrega von Schwisser. That means this is a Shabbos, the two options of how you neutralize negative forces. This is the Godel, the greater option of the two. Not to destroy the klippa and neutralize it completely. But rather to transform the klippa as it is into an ally. That not only do the firstborns in this case not harm the Jews, but they help the Jews, they help holiness. On their union in Shabbos is in his gala given by Shabbos, Shalifne Yetzias Mitzrayim, and that concept of taking the negative and bringing them across to assist the positive, that played out in the Shabbos HaGodol. Durch and Nes Godel from the Makim Yitzrayim B'Evcharem and it was visible in the great miracle of the firstborn Egyptians fighting against Egyptian society. Nitvi Badi Andar Makas, this is completely different to the other ten plagues. I feel the Nitvi Makas B'Echorios, it's even different to the plague of killing the firstborns. Vos is given the Bittul von Klippo and Lumaze. Death of the firstborns means destroy the firstborns. Which is the first lower version of how you get rid of harmful elements. Get rid of them. What happened on Shabbos HaGodol is so incredibly unique. You've got these powerful Egyptians who believe in the Egyptian cause fighting for the Jewish cause. With that information came in my voice and our and this deeper perspective, we could explain another detail that is relevant in how the Alter Rebbe in his Shulchan Aruch describes Shabbos HaGadol. In Onufang Seif, at the beginning of the paragraph, when he tells us that the day of the 10th of Nisan was Shabbos, he then explains how we know this. Here's a Moisif. The Yidden left Mitzrayim on a Thursday. Logically, if Thursday is the 15th of the month, Shabbos is the 10th. Why does he have to tell us? Let's stop and verstehen. The fact that the Jews left Egypt on a Thursday is Mavur in Gemara, something the Gemara explains to us. On a Tosfos is the other Cheshman as Alpizeh Shabbos given as Sorry Benison, and based on that, Tosfos points out that the 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 taking of the lambs had to have been on Shabbos. Obviously, Vos brings us the Alter Rebbe B'Shulchan Aruch. Okay, belongs in Gemara. Gemara is where you go into that level of detail. Why in the Shulchan Aruch, which is a code of Jewish law? 
And MS says in Sein Shulchan Aruch, bring the Alter Rebbe halachis betamein. Yes, it's true that the Alter Rebbe in his Shulchan Aruch does something unique, where he brings not only the bottom line halacha, but also the reasoning behind the halachas. Fine. But that's not a good enough reason. No, I mean, this is not a reason. No, merinit v'anin from cheshman amakayra. My first week, more of a toisus kinna. This is just explaining how the timeline works. It's not a reason why Shabbos Agadol is Shabbos Agadol. The Alter Rebbe brings reasons for Allah. It's not a reason for Allah. It's just establishing the timeline. On Bechlal, is it not a reason for Allah? Generally speaking, the Alter Rebbe does not quote the sources. In fact, most times, the Alter Rebbe doesn't even tell us who the source is. So all the Alter Rebbe had to tell us was that day was Shabbos. You want to know more? Go look it up. It's not the Alter Rebbe's job to tell us how we know it's Shabbos. But the Alter Rebbe used this to explain to us a deeper understanding of what Shabbos HaGadol is about and how it happened. To understand what the Alter Rebbe is telling us, the Kavon of the from the Tzivay Be'osu HaKedosh HaZevi Kulim Yisrael of Esau is Goymer. Obviously, the intention of telling people on the 10th of Nisan to take lambs to their homes, which was the catalyst for the civil war of the Egyptian firstborns against everybody else, came and learned to find in the two ways that we could look at the instruction to take these lambs. Aleph, we could either say, to take a lamb on the 10th of Nisan, and in Nisan from Shabbos HaGadol, which resulted in the various miracles, wasn't just simply a preparation for what was going to happen, leaving Mitzrayim and all the various miracles. But it's possible to say taking a lamb on the 10th of Nisan is intrinsically valuable. That's one possibility. Or we could say, Beis, The only reason to take a lamb on the 10th of Nisan is given is only because we need to be able to have a Korban Pesach in a few days' time. So this is just a means to an end. Right? Two possibilities. There's value in taking the lamb on the day or there's no real value in the lamb. It's just a preparation to the Korban Pesach in a few days' time. Just as you could distinguish between the philosophy of how you understand the mitzvah, you could also have the similar distinction between the spirituality behind the mitzvah. Either we could say the great miracles that happen on Shabbos HaGadol, the Makai Mitzrayim B'Vchoreyem, it's just a preparation for what's coming, which will be the real great revelation of Hashem. The Ebesh is going to reveal himself personally, take them out of Egypt personally. They'll see things at Kriyas Yamsef that nobody's ever seen. They're going to have a Matan Torah. Or we could say that there's something about the miracle of Shabbos HaGadol independently of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. Two possibilities. On the river, so therefore, because there are these two possibilities, when the Alter Rebbe explains to us what Shabbos Agadol is, Zok the Alter Rebbe, he contextualizes it by telling us, On Thursday, the Jews left Egypt, and if the 15th of Nisan is a Thursday, then the 10th of Nisan has to be a Shabbos. So we now know when Shabbos Agadol was. The Mitzvah and Moshe Biri is not just giving us information of a timeline; he's helping us understand the nature of Shabbos Agadol. As the Im from them talk, we are so lucky to say that the nature of this day, the tenth of Nisan, that Tziva Bichlem Goimer, and the instruction that accompanies it, which is to take a lamb, on the Nisan was Zayim from them Gikum, and the miracles which result from them taking the lamb, Kum Tal Sam Mesuvu and Titzov and Acheshman Meyusa Doi Vehi BeShabbos Yotzi Somi Mitzrayim Chol Inin Yitzis Mitzrayim is all because how did we get there? Because of Yitzias Mitzrayim. Why is there a Shabbos Hagadol? So that we'll get to Yitzias Mitzrayim. Why are there these the miracles to prepare us for Yitzias Mitzrayim? Now, based on Beis and what we've already learned as a Nes from Shabbos Hagadol is Adar Chinin Isapcha Chashechol in Nohera. The fact that we have learned that the nature of the miracle of Shabbos HaGadol, which is linked to the nature of Shabbos, is all about the transformation of negative into pos positive darkness into light, is noch mermavur b'primus yon yonim dehi sofa behiba Shabbos chulei, gives us an even deeper appreciation of why the Alter Rebbe wanted us to know that Yetzias Mitzrayim is a Thursday and therefore extrapolate backwards that Shabbos HaGadol was the 10th of Nisan. 
Spiritually, what is this? Shabbos is doch sfer samalchus. We said before about the concept of Shabbos being within time and beyond time. So now we'll explain it from a ruchnistika perspective. Shabbos, we know, represents the element of malchus, which is always typically described as the lowest out of the ten spheres. And that's why we say Shabbos malchus. So Shabbos is the queen. Demot states sfer samalchus in an aliyah in the hechres spheres. But what happens on Shabbos is malchus is elevated outside of its normal realm into the realm of the higher sphere, Zo Bino Chule. Now, in Kabbalah, Malchus is always described as the dark fire. So if you look at a candle closer to the wick, where the actual combustion takes place, the flame is blue. Nehira Ukma, we call it, or Tcheles. And that represents Malchus, the energy from Hashem that engages with and combusts the world, and therefore it's kind of sullied by the world and darkened. The godliness isn't so revealed. And therefore the power of Malchus, like the flame has the power to burn the wick, the power of Malchus is to enter the world and to neutralize the negative forces in the world. So even though we've already said, right, that is Shabbos. Shabbos is about neutralizing negative and harmful forces. We also said that that will only really activate fully when Mashiach comes. When Shabbos will become the reality of all time. And now in our world, Shabbos doesn't transform the real toxic harmful elements of the world but it is able to transform kripas noga so for example food which all week long we would have to engage with with a spiritual intention in order to elevate into something meaningful shabbos does so automatically it automatically converts the kripas noga the mundanities of this world to become holy so if that's how it is now, can you imagine the Jews when they were still in Egypt? When they were not yet commanded to keep Shabbos, which means they weren't yet empowered with the full impact of Shabbos. The power of Shabbos to transform and neutralize the negative of the world wasn't so revealed yet. That's why the Altareb explains to us as the nest from Shabbos Agodel is verbunden, that the miracle of Shabbos Agodel was not locked into only that Shabbos, but it was linked to something that would happen in the future. That already on Shabbos Agodel they were plugged into a future experience of the Geula from Mitzrayim. What would happen at the time of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, so Malchus is very, so to speak, low on the spiritual hierarchy. Sviras Abina is very high on the spiritual hierarchy. Bina, the ability to understand, gives a person a sense of freedom, of liberation, insight. Bina also um, stimulates a person to have self-control. Gvur is related to Bina. That was all going to be exposed to them only at the time of Gula, of Gula five days later. Because we know that Bina is what motivates and precipitates the capacity for healthy Gevura, discipline, focus. That that's actually what stimulates the possibility of the Bechorim fighting against Mitzrayim. Bina clarity which gives them gvura, power, but in a focus, because gvura is also focused, in a focused way to express their power appropriately. Because we know a principle teaches us that something which is din, something which is harsh, can only be rectified, can only be, so to speak, mitigated or sweetened if you can reach the source in simple English, if you have a conflict with somebody online, you'll never resolve the conflict because you're not speaking to the source. Go sit with the person face to face. You actually get to the source of them. You can allay all of the, the, the harshness and all of the negativity. So because Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is going to activate Bina, Bina gives us the opportunity to turn Gevura from being something negative into something helpful. So therefore the Geula is going to empower the Shabbos 
to be able to allow us to neutralize, or in this case, transform the negative harmful forces. In an oifem fun godel, that a Shabbos which isn't yet empowered, because it's a pre-Torah Shabbos, should actually become a great Shabbos, de safra fundi maziken, as is anima sayyat su kedusha, which can have the effect that those harmful elements switch around and come to support the Jewish people. We know that the Arizal explains that the Pasuk in the Megillah that says these days are remembered and done, that it means as Peshast is Chires ki deboi, pelt men umetutof dem venasim. The Arizal explains that what that means is when we remember the, 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 the stories appropriately, they rehappen, they reoccur. Even though you could say we're still servants of Achashverosh. In other words, still in Golas. They're not just any Golas, but we're in an incredibly dark Golas. Which is quite similar to how the Jews were on the 10th of Nisan, let's be honest. Even though there was going to be a Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim in a few days' time, they were still very much trapped in Mitzrayim. The lesson is, Every one of us can take our lamb as the Pasuk says, Mishchu, you've got to draw your hands and take the lamb for Pesach. As we well know, the Mechilta explains, Mishchu means withdraw your hands from engagement in Avoid Zorah, which was a big problem for the Jews in Mitzrayim. And cleave instead to Hashem's mitzvahs. Which means, in our terms, that means, Mishchu, stay away from behavior that is foreign for a Jewish person. Fremd Farayidin. There's no way Jews are getting involved in real Avoid Zara. That doesn't happen anymore. Especially as the Gemara tells us that the temptation of Avoid Zara has already been totally dissipated. On a state, but vacus for mitzvahs. So we've got to get it to is get away from things that are foreign that don't belong in a Jewish person's life, and instead engage with mitzvahs. Or bechlolos to put it more broadly, mishchu is the kav von sur meira. Mishchu represents staying away from negative. And kulochem midavka mitzvahs the kav von vasei toiv. And taking the lamb means taking the opportunity to do a mitzvah. So any one of us who does that, who engages with avoidance of what the Torah prohibits and engagement with what the Torah asks us to do. And then a person doesn't just do those things, but does them with strength, and dedication. And to be engaged in mitzvahs in such a way that you influence others to do the same. Starting with your own family, as the Pasuk says, you first took a lamb for your family. So when we do that, that empowers us to have an influence and, 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 to, and to, to literally shift the world that is around us. Including other nations. To the point that the leaders, the elite of those nations work with full enthusiasm on our behalf. And just like when the Yidin left Mitzrayim, we'll have the same experience that even before leaving, even before Moshiach comes, we'll see amazing miracles. And from those who didn't great in Sech Tzumarin and Influis, we'll prepare ourselves to see the great miracles of Moshiach. Like the Pasuk says, us and our children, everybody, not one soul of a shoe, not one foot will be left behind. We'll be able to go out of Golos and greet Moshiach immediately.